Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming to the Ray Carr Show from California, Charlotte Ray. The book is The Facts of My Life, also written with Larry Strauss. Charlotte, welcome to the show. Yeah, you forgot to mention that Larry Strauss is a wonderful writer. He's written many books, and he happens to be my son. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, both of you together wrote this, and first of all, what other books did Larry write? Oh, he's written so many. One of them is a terrific one called Now's the Time, and that's about uh, a bunch of musicians uh, who were very famous, and it's all interwoven with all the marvelous adventures of finding this lost tape that this famous jazz quintet had, and it weaves a wonderful story about the daughter who finds the tape and the wonderful people she meets along the way who were involved with the tape. It's just very moving. Anyway, uh, uh, he's a terrific writer, and uh, and he's also a very beautiful man, and he's happily married with two children, my granddaughter and my grandson, okay? <laughs> That's beautiful. That's a good story. Yeah. Well, the facts of my life, which, of course, the Facts of Life was the TV show that you were on, uh, still, still extremely popular. Can you reflect back on, you know, when that show first started, you know, how that show really just picked up momentum? Well, you know, I left different strokes. You know, they they decided to spin me off and star me on a sitcom with uh, these uh, girls uh, at a girls' school, Be the House Mother. And I didn't want to leave, leave different strokes because they were so adorable. Yeah. And Mr. And Mr. Drummond was wonderful. And it was such a big hit. But they encouraged me to leave. And uh, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, we had about seven girls in the first season. And then they boiled it down. And they were all tremendously talented. But they knew that there were too many girls too many stories, and that they would have to edit and make it smaller. And then they brought in Nancy McKeon, who played Joe. And, oh, my God, golly, uh, we did pick up after a while. And then we became very, very well-loved by parents and the kids. Both was just wonderful, very heartwarming. Yes, it really was. And you were the anchor of that show. I mean, they always looked for, you know, the Mrs. Garrett to to help with the problems and lead them on the right path. Yeah, but I was never bossy about it. I always only shared my own personal experience. Yes. You know, I didn't give advice like, you know, yelling at them or something. You weren't yelling at them. You were were very kind and very nurturing. I tried. Yeah, it, it was it was great. Now, you also, um, prior to all this, you went to uh, one of the finest universities in the country, Northwestern. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very great. It was a wonderful place. And some your classmate was Paul Lind, Patricia Neal, and Cloris Leachman. Yes, marvelous, marvelous, talented people. And uh, also Gene Hagen. If you remember that great musical that Debbie Reynolds, Gene Kelly, and Donald O'Connor were in. What was it called? You know, the famous one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I'm just drawing a blank myself. <laughs> and she played the nasty movie star. You know, the one with the high voice. It was on silent film. And yeah, she was right. I can't see him yet. Do you remember? No, no. no. I try to remember. Jean Hagen. She, she came from Northwestern, too. She was brilliant, brilliant. While at Northwestern, um, what are some of the things that you picked up that stay with you your whole life? Oh, well, I mean, uh, when I came to Northwestern, all I wanted to do was be a serious actress. I didn't know about comedy. I really didn't. So I was just interested in uh, being like Eleonora Duza, a very, very serious actress. And then uh, Paul Lynn said, well, why don't you try out for the musical? It's called Wah Mew, and it's once a year they put on a big musical with sketches and songs and everything, and I didn't want to do it, but he said, come on, Char. And, you know, we became friends because we were 
freshmen together, and and we both were in uh, uh, Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, our first year in New York together. He was Sir Toby Belch, and I was Mariah, and so I I tried out for the sketches, and I I got all the sketches, and I said I don't understand. Well, I guess because I played him for real, like a real actress, serious. It was funny. Yeah. That's an, you know, that's something interesting. If you try to be funny, it's not funny. But if you're really serious and do it for real, it's funny, you know? Yeah, I do understand that. Um, get, getting back to Gene Hagen, the movie was uh, Singing in the Rain, 1952. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, she was terrific. She was also in the Asphalt Jungle. And, of course, Patricia Neal and Cloris Leesman, my God, tremendous actors, tremendous. Yeah, yeah I mean, Cloris Leesman, really. I mean, you think about all the decades that she's worked through and all the different characters from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And, you know, she's still today. I mean, she was on Mary Tyler Moore. She was Phyllis Lindstrom. Yes, <laughs> very funny. And I was on her sitcom. She had a sitcom. Yes, yes, she did. Yeah, it didn't run too long, but I did a couple of appearances on it. Had a lot of fun with her. Yeah. What do you think was your breakout role that really got you the the, the prominence that uh, kind of launched your career? I just don't know. When I when I was on Broadway, you know, I was up for a couple of uh, Tonys. Um, I did quite well on Broadway, and then I don't know. I mean, one thing led to another, and. And my, my, I'll tell you, my, my career and life flowered, just flowered and became extraordinary. I'm just so lucky because I don't think I'm very talented at anything else except acting. But I, I would die if I couldn't act. But that's the only thing I was really talented at. <laughs> so thank God I've been able to make a living. <laughs> doing it um your your broadway debut was the musical comedy three wishes for jamie yeah. yes with john Ray and ann jeffries okay and it was a very i played a little irish girl from ireland and uh it was darling and uh oh, look i wanted to ask you something did you know not only do i have the book that we wrote together but uh, about four months ago, I made the recording of the book. I'm reading it. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. I'm doing the audio. Yeah. And so you can get it at Amazon.com or whatever you call it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you'll probably get it at Amazon, and I'm sure it's available almost anywhere. It's uh, it's great that you're doing that because it'll add a, a, a lot more character and a lot more um, – it'll – and credibility to it because it's you reading your life. Yes. And I, you know, and I'm a good actor, but I do the real thing. And uh, the, what I'm doing is very an interesting thing because, you know, the new cars, this year, the cars do not have CDs in them. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you got to plug in your phones or um, you could have a flash drive, MP3s. Yeah. Yeah, but if you have an older car or if you have a CD player at home, I'm doing this with an engineer because people my age, you know, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm 90, and next month, on Earth Day, April 22nd, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm going to be 91. Oh, my goodness. That's great. And you, you, you sound wonderful, and uh, you're still extremely vibrant. Yeah, well, so the thing is, I don't want to make any money out of it. I just want to get the records. It would be like 10 CDs for each book and, you know, charge like $22 in case they want to hear it. Because, you know, a lot of people don't want to read anymore or maybe they're blind or whatever. And, I, you know, I just want them to, to be able to have my life, you know, you know. Yeah, let's talk. Sure. Yeah, that's great. And let's talk a little bit about that. Um, the book does cover, you know, some controversial things in the book. And, 
I don't know if you want to go into that or not, but I just wanted to, to mention that the, the book is all encompassing. Well, yes. You know, I'm not, you know, I want to let it all hang out because, you know, a life without the downsides, you don't appreciate the good sides. You don't know what you, what, I, I can't explain it. it. It's been a challenging life, but no more than a lot of people. I mean, for one thing, my firstborn, I had two sons. My first boy, my darling Andy, was born autistic and uh, developmentally disabled. And he also had uh, seizures, you know, from, uh, what do you call that thing? Well, you know, yeah. I, forget, I forget the name of it. And uh, this was a big trial, and it was a challenge. It was, uh, nobody knew about autism in those days. And <laughs> you'll read all about uh, what my husband and I went through at that time. It was, uh, it was extremely like a nightmare and painful. And we loved him so much. And we tried and we tried and we did as much as we possibly could. And, uh, he had a good life. And it was a, not a great life because even today, I mean, there is wonderful progress with autism. Yes, and there is. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. But in those days, nobody knew anything. We didn't even know what autism meant. We had no idea. Oh, no, no. That's kind of a, you know, I mean, it's always been there, but they didn't really know exactly how it worked. No, no. And then... Uh, there was no support system, no schools, no anything and until a little later and he got a chance to go to school. And then, um, and then as I was going through all of this stress, I found alcohol as my drug of choice because I wanted to have, to be able to sleep, you know, and uh, get up in the morning and be able to do things for my son. And, and then I was working on Sesame Street. Yes, you know, I remember. Yeah, Molly the mailman, mail person, and, and, uh, you know, I, I had a big life, and I was trying to do everything for Andy, and then my other son was born, Larry, the writer. Right. And, and then, uh, that night I would, uh, drink, and then eventually, uh, I met my husband, and he was a wonderful musician after he was in World War II. He graduated from Yale School of Music on the GI Bill, and he studied with Paul Hindemith, the composer, classical music, and he was a composer and a pianist and an arranger, and we were very supportive of each other, and we loved our life together. Uh, we were both very creative people. Well, I mean, you were married for 25 years, and uh, you found out he was gay. Yes. Well, you see, at one point, a very dear friend of mine said, you know, that I, I was telling her that uh, when Andy finally got into a safe, good situation, you know, my son with autism, and I was still drinking, and she said, you poor baby, why don't you go to AA? And I said, well, I'm not an alcoholic. I just have a little drinking problem. She said, go. You'll find people there. You will love it. And somehow or other, I went. We had a rap party for uh, Sesame Street that season. And I went to a, a meeting on 81st and Lexington Avenue in New York. And I went in, and I was expecting drunks with red noses and burlap. <laughs> you know, lounging around and everything. No, no. They were beautiful young people, beautifully dressed, laughing and having a good time. I couldn't believe it. And after the meeting, we all joined hands and said the Lord's Prayer, and I felt at home. I felt I'd found my place, and I've been in the program for 43 years. Oh, that's that's a great story. Yeah. Really is. Oh, and then my husband, then he found the program because we were drinking buddies, you know. And uh, and one day his sponsor said, 
that he would have to tell me the truth about himself. And then he told me that he was bisexual. And I thought I'd die. I couldn't believe it. And so I went to a friend's house in the middle of the night in my nightgown. I drove over and she said, well, God's opening the gate. And, you know, we remained. It was hard. It was painful. I felt like less than a woman. And eventually I got over it. Never said anything negative to my children about my my husband. Never. He was a good father and a tremendous artist. As a matter of fact, he got an Emmy because he coordinated all the music for Amadeus, the movie. Oh, yeah, 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 in the 80s, right. Yes, and uh, anyway, to make a long story short, we were friends till he died. That's, that's a good story. We are speaking with Charlotte Ray. The Facts of My Life is the book, and Charlotte also narrates the book in an audio form, which is wonderful, and I can't wait to hear that. Uh, Charlotte, you also appeared on some other great shows that I remember growing up. Car 54, Where Are You? One of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Nat Heiken, who wrote that, he was a genius. Don't you think so? I, I do. You know, it's a very underrated show, and looking back on it today, it's still it still seems like it's very fresh to me. Yes, and, you know, I'm going to talk to Norman Lear and Carl Reiner before we leave this earth. They should really put him up for the Television Academy Hall of Comedy. Don't you think he belongs there with Gary Marshall? Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I got to do that. I okay. think it's the right thing to do, don't you? I, I, I believe it is. And Car 54, I wish would uh, I wish they would play it more on TV so a younger generation could be introduced to it as well. <laughs> yeah. be nice, yeah. And Al Lewis and Fred Gwen started there. That's right, Al Al Lewis and I played husband and wife, right. as you know, and Fred Gwynn, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, actor and uh, an artist. He used to do artwork, too, but he was a wonderful actor, and what a nice guy, really, really terrific guy. Yeah. <laughs> and Joey Ross, too. Well, Joey, God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't realize that he had Falling into a pile of wonderful, uh, a wonderful break. He came from a nightclub down in Florida where they told, he had to tell dirty jokes. And uh, what's his name liked him? His rough, gruff voice and everything and brought him into Car 54 and first on the Phil Silver show and then on Car 54. And <clears throat> he didn't appreciate what a wonderful break it was. And so at night he would carouse around and then he'd come to, to film the next day and he'd be tired and he'd take a nap and he'd be, he just wasn't very professional about it. And so that shortened the, the term. I mean, he could have gone on for many years except that he couldn't take it from Joe anymore because he was so difficult. He, he eventually had trouble uh, of even getting through a sentence. He couldn't breathe all the way through. I know I shouldn't do. He was a, a sweet soul, but he didn't realize. How good he had it. It's too bad he didn't understand how, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity it was to make people happy. Yes, I, I would agree with you. Uh, you were born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The lovely city of Milwaukee, and it's, uh, I'm sure being a, a Midwesterner, I'm from Cleveland, it, it's a, it's a great place to grow up. It's more wholesome, it seemed, like you're able to appreciate things, uh, on a more down home level. Yeah, oh yeah, I liked it very, very much. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always grateful because I had a wonderful bringing up there and, and wonderful schools and everything. We used to live on top of my father's store on 12th Street. And I loved the school because of the Seaford School. There were people from all religions and nationalities. I was born in 1926. Right. So we had n- new Americans from Greece, 
and Norway and Russia and, uh, and there was some African Americans and it was a real mixture because it was near downtown. It was not in the suburbs. And I just loved the different culture. It was a melting pot. Yeah. And I was, yeah, exactly. And I, I go to their people's houses and eat their food and talk and I, it was wonderful. I loved it. And then, uh, when I was 10 years old, my parents moved my sisters and me to the suburbs and it was, oh, it was a wonderful school and, and lovely, but it was more homogenized and there were, everyone had two cars in the garage. And there was Formica everywhere. Yeah, the American dream. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, we weren't rich. No, no, no. I mean, my father bought this wonderful house for twelve thousand (laughs) dollars in those days. You know, my God. And but you know what I'm trying to say is, when I came to New York after I graduated college, I really loved being in New York because of the different cultures and. Wherever you were, they were from all over the world. I loved it. Yeah, you learn a lot. Uh, if you grow up uh, in a very homogenized um, environment, you don't know anywhere near what you're going to know when you go out in the real world. Right. I went to Cleveland. We played Cleveland when I was doing uh, the British musical Pickwick. Pickwick, here. Yeah. And we played the theater there in Cleveland. And that reminds me of Milwaukee, Yeah. Yeah, how did you find Cleveland growing up? Uh, Cleveland was a, a nice town. It really was. And, you know, I was a big sports fan, so I, I had some teams to root for. And, uh, it, it, it's a nice place. A lot of great broadcasters and actors and actresses came through here. So I got to see a lot of stuff. And we were fortunate. We had very good radio back in those days. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's, you know, yeah. good place. Yeah. And where do you live now? I live in a suburb of Cleveland called Lakewood. Oh, okay. Where is this program going? Where is it? Well, we're going to edit it down a little bit. We're going to play it on WCSB radio and it will be available on my website, raycaram.com. We're going to air the interview in a couple of weeks and it'll be over the internet and locally in Cleveland. Oh, that's nice. You know, you know, I'm going to, uh, Palm Springs. On the 20th of April, and my sister's flying in from Dallas. My sister Mimi is four years younger than I, and we were both graduates of Northwestern University. And they want to honor me and bring my books and my recordings uh, to the alumni group in Palm Springs. And so we're going to go down there (laughs) on the 20th. And uh, we'll talk about all the people that we knew, uh, Paul Lind and so on, and this one and that one. And and my sister Mimi was one of the musical directors of the Wham You show that I told you about. Yeah. And she played with another guy. They played two pianos with the orchestra. She was the musical director. And we're going to sing the uh, the Northwestern song. Oh, oh the- you Northwestern. Fight right through that line with your colors. Well, I forgot now, but anyway, I'll get the lyrics again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, before I let you go, Charlotte, I just wanted to ask you, do you stay in touch with the girls from Facts of Life? I do. And uh, my favorite, I love them all, is Nancy. And she celebrated her birthday yesterday. Nancy McKeon. She played Joe. Right. She's a wonderful, wonderful wonderful woman and a wonderful mother and a wonderful wife. And I still am in touch with uh, Lisa Welshaw and her four, three kids, beautiful kids, a uh, boy and two girls, and uh, Kim, Kimmy Fields. Oh, my God, she's got a, a beautiful husband. He's uh, Chris Brown. He's an actor. And she's got two little boys. Uh, the older one is about five, and the little one's about one. They are beautiful, beautiful children. And no, no, I, when she was on Dancing with the Stars, I went over there to root for her. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's great. 
Uh, Charlotte, you are very, very, uh, you're wonderful, and I, I really appreciate all the time that you gave me today, and I, I wish you continued success and uh, great health. Okay, and the same to you. Thank you, Charlotte, and uh, we'll talk again. We'll mention the, hey, why don't you mention my thing again, my so they know where to get it. Yes, um, the book is The Facts of My Life by Charlotte Ray and your son, Larry Strauss, which is available on Amazon. And I would um, venture to guess anywhere they sell books. Um, and what about the recording? Yes, you've also done the audio recording of The Facts of My Life, and that it will also be available on Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll put that on my website where people can click on it or click to it and order it. And, you know, if they want the recording of, of the, the CD, oh, you know what? I, I have to figure out how to tell them to get it. But well, you, otherwise they can get the other thing and hook it in to the, uh, you know, the uh, machine. The, right. The, yeah. I could talk to Harlan about that, and we could find that out, and we could put a, a link to that on my website as well. Okay. Um, that, that's not a problem. Okay. Terrific. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I certainly talked my head off. I hope you don't mind. No, no, Charlotte, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to be comfortable and talk to me about anything. Well, I did. <laughs> okay. You're wonderful. Uh, thank you. You have a nice day now. You too. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.